For years, Bose made the best noise cancelling headphones on the market. But then in 2016, Sony came along with the 1000X series, and suddenly Bose's position was a lot less certain. Fast forward to today, and it's clear that Sony has become the one to beat. I'm Seth from Trusted Reviews, and these are the Sony WH-1000XM3. The Sony 1000XM3 are the best noise cancelling headphones on the market. Now, £330 will buy you some very competent alternatives, such as the Bose QuietComfort 35 Mark II or the Bowers & Wilkins PX, but neither of those offer the Sony's all-round appeal. The 1000XM3's noise cancelling performance, sound quality, and features list are an unbeatable combination. Now, they're not a huge departure from the 1000XM2 from 2017, but there have been a huge number of small tweaks, all of which add up for a significant upgrade. Design-wise, they're quite familiar. They're not all that different from the original 1000X or the 1000XM2 from 2017. That's not a bad thing, because I've always found the design to be somewhere between elegant and ergonomic. They're very nice. They're certainly more stylish than the Bose QuietComfort 35, although they're not quite as nice as the Bowers & Wilkins PX. Let's talk about the new stuff, and the most obvious addition is the colouring in around the logo and the noise cancelling microphones. The black version has bronze accents, while the silver version uses brass highlights. There's a new headband, which bends more acutely and is less of a circle, which means that there's uh, less of a gap between the headband and your head. You don't get that Mickey Mouse effect where the uh, headbands kind of form a big circle around your head. The padding is thicker and make up for a bigger surface area. And also there's more room in there for your ears. So these are definitely, unarguably, over-ear headphones. They're also 20 grams lighter than before, which takes them a lot closer to the Bose QuietComfort 35s. Now the Bose are still a little lighter, but they're close. This generation of the Sony 1000X are now comfortable enough that I could wear them for hours. I had these on a two hour flight and didn't once feel the need to remove them. Actually, at one point I fell asleep wearing these. They're that comfortable. The chassis is still primarily plastic, which isn't as nice as the aluminium and ballistic nylon on the Bowers & Wilkins PX, or the aluminium and leather used on the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless. But those two are heavier than the Sony's, and for what they're worth, the Sony's have a new quieter and smoother hinge, as well as more solid buttons. The one change I'm not so sure about is the plastic on the back of the ear cups. Now, the 1000XM2 from last year had a tougher, more textured back. This time it's a sort of soft touch, slightly rubbery feel, which is more delicate. Now, Sony tells me that's to make the sort of operation sounds uh, more quiet, so you won't hear yourself tapping on, on the ear cups, but I'm worried that they'll get scratched up quite easily. Sony does provide a nice hard case, so if you intend on throwing these into your bag for travel, use the case. The battery system has been upgraded. Gone is the old micro USB system for charging and replaced with the new USB-C standard. That's great if you're the owner of one of the new Android smartphones because you could basically use the same charging cable. There's a new improved fast charge feature. So if you plug them in for 10 minutes, you can get five hours of playing time. Total battery life hasn't improved, but that's fine because 30 hours is more than enough. And actually that's 10 hours more than the competition. I think the Bose and the Bowers and Wilkins offer around 20 hours. The most significant addition is the new QN1 processor, which boasts a massive upgrade in noise cancelling and music playback performance. Noise cancelling headphones tend to work best with low constant sounds, such as office air conditioning or the engine of a plane. It tends to work less well on transient, higher frequency sounds, such as voices or the clattering of a keyboard. That's where these headphones come in, because the QN1 chip is supposed to be four times more powerful than the predecessor, and it's supposed to be a lot more effective at handling the mid to high frequencies. The QN1 chip 
really does its job because the noise cancelling on these headphones is eerily effective. I was on a plane and behind me I heard two girls excitedly nattering away and I thought that's fine because noise cancelling headphones don't tend to erase everything. But when I landed, I realized that behind me wasn't just two teenagers, there was a whole class of about 20 of them. So 20 teenagers down to two, not bad. Another time I wore these headphones and stood by the big roundabout next to Waterloo Bridge. Now, if you know that roundabout, you know that it's constantly surrounded by buses and London taxis, which are very loud. I didn't hear anything. Finally, I took them into the Trusted Reviews office, which is a test unto itself because it's full of voices and keyboards and voices talking about keyboards and the occasional ping pong tournament. I didn't hear anything. The noise cancelling performance on these headphones is simply unparalleled. There's nothing on the market that can perform this well at shutting the world out. Audio performance has also been improved thanks to the QN1 chip's new analog amplifier, which cuts down on noise and distortion. Last year's 1000XM2 were known for a slightly flabby bass, but the 1000XM3s have fixed that. What you get is a tighter, more engaging performance. It's a really entertaining sound, and the only thing I have to complain about is kind of a nitpick. I would say the Bowers & Wilkins PX offer slightly more detail at the top end, but they're also kind of mid-range focused, and I think the Sony's here offer a more rounded sound. Some of my favorite features are back and improved. For instance, the touchpad is more responsive than ever, which is great because it's very useful. You tap on it to pause or play, you swipe forward and back to change tracks, you swipe up and down to change volume, you hold your whole palm over it to mute the music and let in the world, which is very useful for hearing train announcements or hearing the flight attendants serving you drinks. Make sure you download Sony's Headphones Connect app, which is very useful, it's very clever. What it does is it uses the motion sensors in your phone to work out what you're doing, and then it'll tell the headphones the appropriate level of noise cancelling. So it'll know if you're sitting still, or walking, or running for the bus, or if you're sitting on a plane. I've set the walking option to 50% noise cancelling, which gives me some situational awareness walking around town, and it means I don't get run over crossing the road. But I do want full noise cancelling on a train. The automation totally works. As soon as I get on a train, the headphones will go ping and automatically ramp up the silence. To sum up, the Sony 1000X M3 offer the best noise cancelling performance on the market. They sound fantastic, the features list is comprehensive, and they're a bit more responsive than before. For £330, you will not find a better pair of noise cancelling headphones. But what do you think? Are you a Bose fan? Are you offended that I like these very much? Please let us know in the comments below, and if you want more videos like this, please subscribe. I'm Seth from Trusted Reviews, thank you for watching.